wrestling buddy want to be your buddy? Hey, buddy. Buddy. Hey, buddy. Extreme Rules has come and gone. A major star is back from injury. A baby has won a match, and we're going to have two champions live in studio today, which means we got to get going on the Wrestling of Padres Slamcast, yo. Adults put it in their brain. That's right. It's going to go right to your cortex. Welcome, everybody. Whether you're listening or watching on AfterBuzz TV on Podcast One, we welcome you in. This is going to be a jam-packed show. Our guests later on in the show, we're going to have have Jervis Cottonbelly and the Hobo from Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, the brand new United Tag Team Champions. And we've talked about wanting to have them on the show. We wanted to bring them in studio, and they're going to be here right in front of our very eyes. I am thrilled. It's going to be amazing. We we should have put down uh, padded floors, though, some sort of mats or something. What if Jervis... What if he faints? If he does faint, that we may have to catch him. We may have to. You know what? Wait, maybe we should do a trust fall. I don't know if he trusts me in order to fall in my arms. Jervis is a very trusting man. Oh, that's that's kind of him. Yeah, I think we should do a trust fall. I think that's how we could really all come together as a group. Okay. So, so it'll be for this your means bonnet. I'll get a tag team title shot. Nah, I don't know about that, but uh, we'll be for your bonnet. Think about it. My bonnet needs no beef. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's get cracking here, guys. We are at Wrestling Buds on Twitter. We are Facebook.com slash Wrestling Buds. Please go to the iTunes page. We don't harp on you too much about this, but we're bringing you free content every week. We have no ads. All we ask is that you go to the iTunes page, rate us five stars, write us a sweet, sweet review, and we will be very appreciative of that. That helps other people find the show. Exactly. Helps we, us move up the algorithm. The algorithm. Mm -hmm. What a word that is. Yeah, that's, you know, the ruthless aggression time in WWE? Yeah. Do you remember the algorithm era? Uh, I think that was from 92 to 94. Yeah, it was all Dean Douglas. Yeah. The just, algorithm era. It, yeah, it was uh, the, the when he was the teacher, the, the professor. So get you some of that. Get you some algorithm. There you go. Get some algorithms for us. <laughs> Hook us up with that. Johnny's water's full of it. Oh, so much. So much aminos and maca and just you love this water. And algorithm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got to do intros, of course. Uh, I'm at Jay Quasto on Twitter. The man right here in studio with me wearing the sweet Dalton Castle t-shirt that he picked up at PWG this past weekend. Right? Yes, that is true. There you go. They he, sit right there. You have to buy something. Mm -hmm. They'll beat you up. He is the host of Curtain Jerks. You can also see someone who looks a lot like him if you go to YouTube.com slash On Your Mark Show and watch those hilarious episodes. Find him on Twitter at Curtain Jerks. You know, he is Scott Narver. Scott Narver. He's Scott Narver. Curtain Jerk and Padre. He's always there to save the day. Scott Narver. He's Scott Narver. <laughs> I wish I looked like that guy. That dude is ripped. He's Skeeter Skyflyer, man. He gets he gets he gets uh, gets on in the air. Yeah, he gets up in the air. Uh, and you know, there's a video up this week with Victoria, oh. one of the greatest divas knockouts of all time in my book. Yeah. Uh, but sadly, she didn't sing my song though. Oh. I'd like to thank Mickey James. What? For singing my song. Which I mean, she is she's hardcore country. Yeah. And that song does have a twang. It does. It doesn't sound like her though. Yeah, that's auto tuning. Oh, it's auto-tuned. Yeah, so that way, that way, you know, people are like, oh, it's a girl singing. Like, you know all the stuff that people have all these stupid prejudices about? Oh, like, can a girl be the hero in Mad Max Fury Road? Oh, the girl's a hero in Star Wars. Like, yeah. You, she just wanted to not deal with that at all, just sort of hide behind it. But know? if it was auto-tuned, are you sure it's not T-Pain? I'm pretty sure it's not T-Pain. I don't think T-Pain's a big wrestling fan. You sure? Uh, he's no Flo Rida. My bad. That's right. a great point. The other man that is not in studio, but he's in Washington, D.C. He is the host of Dishing on Movies. He is always vest for business. You can find him on Twitter at The Walking Dale. That's because he's Dale Rutledge. I got a puppy. I got a puppy? Bad news. What up, man? What's going on, fellas? Hey, man. How you doing, man? 
You know, I, I wouldn't have guessed that. It doesn't sound like Mickey James, but, you know, Scar, Scott and Arbor sounds a little funny this week, too. You got a cold there, buddy? What's going on with you? I'm a little froggy right now. Oh, no. Yeah, can... Your voice does sound kind of like, you know, almost uh, Isaac Hayes-ish. It's, oh. very, it's very deep. Dead? Well, wasn't I sound going, dead. Wow. Wasn't going. Wasn't going. Couldn't make a cho- uh, chocolate salty balls over. Just had to go to dead. Hey? Yeah, yeah. Well, I can make it sound like a didgeridoo now. Oh boy. <laughs> well, we started with algorithms, and now we're on didgeridoos. Yeah. Let's. What other four Scrabble winners? What other four syllable words could we come up with during this episode? <laughs> we'll find out some. Yeah, we probably will. What's up, Dale? Uh, not much. Just getting ready for my trip. I leave on this Thursday, headed out to Paris for a couple weeks, and then out to UK. I am actually found out Nigel McGinnis is going to be out there at the same time as I am, so I'm, I think I might be oh, doing lunch with Nigel and his mom. Get the heck out of here. his mom? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what possibilities could happen from that situation, but I am all about it. Wait, so he's going to be in the UK, like, around, like, same area that you are? Exactly. Yeah, his his mom actually lives, well, I think, like thirty minutes out from London. So I'm just gonna pop down there and and uh, hang out and and see what the extended McGinnis family is like. That's amazing. I bet she's tough. <laughs> I bet she's real tough. She's a lovely lady. I've never met her in person, but he's he's told me all about her, and I've seen her in pictures. Oh. Yeah, so, it'll be very exciting. Good that and Revolution Pro <laughs> show on uh, that Sunday. So I actually had a couple people hit me up saying that they were going. So if anybody else is headed out. To that show, Zack Saber Jr., Kurt Angle are the main event. Will Osprey is going to be wrestling there. It's got mm-hmm. a great, solid card. So please hit me up on Twitter if anybody is going. Love to uh, hang out in London Town. And then you and uh, Nigel just cruising around. Wankers, be great. <laughs> That's how we do, bro. That's how we do. And then you're going to Japan. Yeah, the obvious answer from it is. Hop over to Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, I think they're right bordering each other. Are they not? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're pretty close. I mean, I don't look close. at a map very often, but as far as I know, maps haven't changed. You haven't, you haven't looked at an atlas. Uh, it's Tony Atlas. Yeah. I, I, I have looked at him many times. Yeah, and he looks at your feet. Yeah, and he laughs a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think Japan is a uh, yeah. It sounds like a pretty safe trip to from from London. A couple hours, perhaps. You, yeah, Europe touches Asia. So as far as I know, they're next to each other. Yeah, yeah they're, just hitchhike. They're buddies. Yeah, take, take a yeah. bullet train. But I, I am going out to uh, New Japan. Out in Osaka, uh, which I've, I've, I haven't spent a lot of time in Osaka, so I'm very excited. Everybody says that's their favorite city in Japan. It's like super laid back and cool, so it should be a good place to see New Japan. I think the pay-per-view is called uh, Dominion, and they just announced the main event for it. Actually, um, they're going to do three main events, and uh, Kenny Omega is going to have a ladder match uh, versus Tanahashi. That oh. one I'm definitely super stoked for. Good Ooh. God, that's going to be amazing. That's gonna be yes, great. sir. And you're gonna bring that equipment just in case you maybe get an interview or two. Never know. Never know who you might stumble across. Yeah. Bring your own wild ladder. world of wrestling. You know. Yeah. Why don't you bring a ladder too? Yeah. Just in case. I don't know if I can fit a ladder in my carry-on, but maybe mm-hmm. there's a foldy kind. They, if you go to Home Depot, they got all kinds. Yeah, and then they'll, they'll give you a deal. <laughs> because if they do the the double fall down from something crazy, you get up there, you win that title. Yeah. Dale's all of a sudden in New Japan. Yeah. Wow. Weirder things have happened, guys. Yeah, speaking of which, PWG, you went. Yeah, very weird. What'd you think? I got in. What'd you think? The speakeasy of wrestling. I know. Well, it's tough to get in. I know that. It is tough to get in. I've, it's They're going to be celebrating 13 years next month. Yep. My first show ever. Um, a lot of standouts. Uh, a crazy, crazy show. A crazy crowd. I would actually compare it now that I went to Progress Wrestling, which, Dale, I don't know if you're going to when you're going to be out in the U.K., if it's going to be running there or not. No, I, I, I don't think it's there. I'm only in the UK like three days. Okay. It's it's our version of, of progress wrestling. Like, they mirror each other in the crowd is an element of the show. Mm-hmm. Like, it is... Oh, big time. Yeah, and it's, it's wild, it's crazy, uh, and those wrestlers clearly love performing at those shows. And it's very sweaty. It's very sweaty. It's, it's disgusting in there. It's unique, it's... It's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Mm-hmm. Um, it took me forever to finally get in, and there were so many. Well, seeing yeah. the wrestling community all show up for this show. People start lining up at, like, 5 
they PM. they've cut down on that a little bit okay. from what I hear. They they've refined that because that sounded absurd before. Yeah. So you show up closer to the time. Um, Dalton Castle and uh, Adam Cole put on, in my opinion, the match of the night. They that was so tremendous. They kicked off the show. Uh, Jeez, kicked off the show? Mm-hmm. Good lord, man. And then uh, the main event, Sammy Callahan versus Roderick Strong, was also exceptional. Oof. And uh, Whoa. I believe Galloway was there. I saw him tweet about it. He was there. Yeah. Uh, he was supposed to fight Brian Cage, but Brian Cage could not be there due to a family emergency. But Ooh. he fought uh, Big Mike, okay. who I had not seen in action before, and that was a, that was pretty good. Good deal. But it's you know it's a lot of pressure. It's it's that sort of house show element where you see guys without the production, you see guys without all the story, and they just gotta impress you and they got to yeah. put on a show the f- and, and those fans are not easy to win over like i've heard stories mm-hmm. from some of our friends who have wrestled for pwg and they're like yeah the first time i did it man i didn't know what the fans were going to think of me and then eventually if you just stay true to who you are th- you will win them over like i've, I've yeah. heard um you know like uh, timothy thatcher brilliant wrestler brilliant grappler submission specialist He's done PWG a number of times, and he said he's like, I I didn't think that they were I was going to be their style, but they respect Thatcher so much for how he is, mm-hmm. they're totally into it, and that, I think that's that's kind of how the fans are. If you stay true to who you are, for the most part, I think they'll they'll jump on board. And and progress is that same way. Like they will embrace you, um, and it's so they're both incredibly wild. I mean, as a fan, if you ever get to go to both, I highly recommend it because they're unusual wrestling beasts. Yeah, and speaking of great shows, uh, this Sunday, May 29th, there's going to be another taping for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. So much good stuff happening right now. Also, if you haven't downloaded the Fight TV app, go to your app store, download F-I-T-E app. You can watch all tons of combat sports, including Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. But I, unfortunately, won't be at the taping this Sunday. I'll be in Florida. Oh, with Florida. I'm, I'm not going to be. God, no. I will not be with Florida. It doesn't matter! Yeah, I don't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm going to be at the Palm Beach Improv uh, with my friend Rachel Feinstein. So if anyone's in Florida, if you're near Palm Beach, come out to our shows. we got shows Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm. Yeah. That sounds like a good time. <laughs> Guys, there's, I, my apartment overlooks the uh, pool for, for this building. Oh, and is, your neighbor lay, is your neighbor laying out, getting sun? My, na- <laughs> my neighbor is down there, ironically. Um, but there's somebody, there's like a, a pool party going on, and this like 45 year old woman keeps yelling at what i presume is her child but in between yelling she keeps making the the i want the championship reference you know that like across the waist like it's gonna be mine i'm gonna wear it right here she just keeps yelling at this child and then referencing to winning the championship i don't know what's going on with this party but i might need to join and your neighbor's like hey mama who wants a shot at the title i do I think that child needs floaties. He's a yeah. little thin. He's a little gone. He's going to sink. Hey, Dale, can we just pretend it's extreme rules and I'll just lock her up in one of them uh, jackets? I was gonna... Last time I referenced to my crotch that much, I had to see a doctor. <laughs> I, my favorite match was that <laughs> asylum match. Uh, I even tweeted. I said, bareback, that sounds like a great time. Give me them thumbtacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is in the middle of everything, guys. Yep. In the middle of it all. And you know what we're about to be in the middle of? Slamcast News. All right, let's get into it. Thank you, House Band. Thank you, House Mouse Band. Yeah, I'm sure you want to adopt them. We appreciate you. I mean, I might. You have a uh, you have some rat support. Yeah, I'll tell you internet. what. My my former pet rats are over after last week. Mm-hmm. Not not to the level of Dale's neighbor, but a lot of people are on board. What are their names? Oh, Jesus, I didn't get their names, did I last week? No, no. We had three different pet rats. Well, okay, we had one, and then we got that what one died. The hell, shut up. <laughs> we had one rat. <laughs> This that, is part of the Slamcast news, Dale. That, that rat passed away, and then we got two at the same time. The first, so you didn't name the them? first rat we owned was named Magoo. Is that one dead? He sure is. Uh, yep. So Magoo died. Magoo died. Just walking off of his cage, <laughs> not knowing there was a yeah, he, construction uh, conveyor no, belt. No, he thought there was there. an announcer's table, and there wasn't. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to go through it. The other two rats' names were uh, Butters and Sparkles. I only I named Butters. <laughs> I didn't name Sparkles. That was not my choice. My ex did. All right. So, oh boy! So when the rats died, your relationship died? Uh, no, those rats were alive when we broke up. I'm assuming they're dead now because it's been over six years. 
Oh, boy. Rather, unless they're the longest, unless they're like Master Splinter and they just never die. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know. But yeah, they were. Did they, did they know Kung Fu? That's that's a good question. Uh, no, the one was uh, Jitsu. The <laughs> Yes, that's day old new you know what? Uh, I, I think that's enough about my rats for this week. Uh, <laughs> oh, next week I can't wait. <laughs> we'll keep it. Yeah, we'll expose a little bit more about my previous rat history as every episode goes on. If you're a psychologist Gotta... out there, hit him up on Twitter at Jay Quasto. Yes, yes, please do. Uh, I was very the angry. wrestling compadres rat cat. <laughs> yep. Shout out to Gav Wav for making that uh, picture of Seth Rollins with a rat head. Um, at the end of Extreme Rules. Mm -hmm. Way to go, buddy. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Good. That looked good. All right, so Cody Rhodes uh, asked for his release from WWE. He was granted his release and uh, basically sent out a, a lengthy letter afterwards explaining his situation. It's, you know... Um, it's a fascinating he, read. He, he's, he's a man of his own... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's a strong move that he made. He said, you know what? Um, I've done everything I could with it. I wanted to have a strong run as Cody Rhodes. They didn't see it that way. All my ideas were not accepted, mm -hmm. and it was time to... Uh, and looked down upon at times, and, you yeah. know, he talked about those brass rings that you always hear about, and he went for them, and he's never had a lack of ideas, did did what he was asked, and uh, feels he's capable of more. Yeah. And so really really stood up on his own two feet and is going to go chase it. Mm -hmm. And we have I, I liked it because he, he basically, you know, outside of a couple of digs at the at the writers for not supporting his ideas, it was it was just about him and about his own challenges and the way that he saw the company. It wasn't like it, it felt very different when you want to compare it to how Ryback's letter was, you know, last month. It was a very different feel and it, it felt I don't know, to me more professional, more grown up. Um, from a guy who could easily, you know, have been not that because, you know, growing up in the business. I mean, you, your your world is is this bubble when you are around wrestling all the time doing doing this. So I, I thought it was really professional, and I thought he handled it well. And you know, I mean, hopefully we see him somewhere else. I don't, I don't know what the uh, the plan is, but it, it it seems like he could. Oh, by the way, for the fact that it seems like. But Stardust wasn't even his idea. They just told him that he should get painted up like his brother is how he kind of refers to it in that letter. Yeah. The fact that that wasn't even something he wanted to do or threw out there, he owns that so hardcore. He like, did. good for mm -hmm. him for just really embracing it. Well, we've talked for a long time about how Cody Rhodes is brilliant, and so's Dustin. I mean, they... And, and look at their dad. Their dad was brilliant. I mean, it, it, it came down to both of them, too. The, just the, the intelligence for the business and character and committing... Everything about Cody Rhodes is just, it, it's fantastic. And he, like you said, I don't, yeah, Stardust wasn't necessarily his idea, but you wouldn't tell by watching him because he was amazing. I mean, he would show up in full character, Radio Row at 6 a.m. of SummerSlam 2014. He was there in full character, had to this day one of our favorite interviews we've ever had on the show. Don't know what the hell it was about, but it was amazing. <laughs> and, you know, to his credit, he's just going to move on. He, he's still young. He's still got a long career ahead of him, whether it's in wrestling or something else. And just the there's been an outpouring of support, and it's well-deserved. Yeah, he did it really well, and it was good for him to address it right away and did it in a very classy way. So. Yeah. Good and, on him. And another release, which obviously we've seen this coming for a couple of weeks. Uh, not only was he, he was suspended, unfortunately, for the wellness policy, then he had a domestic issue. Adam Rose got released. I don't want to get into any negativity about it. I just hope that whatever happened, I hope that he can get it resolved, and we hope for the best for him and his family because obviously we we did see they have quite a... They, they, they have a rough go at it uh, from what we've seen from the ESPN special. Um, well, what's important you know. is WWE acknowledged that uh, they granted his release that he requested. Right, so he wasn't fired. Right, so it's it's clearly I I really like to think that both sides talked about it and he's gonna get his life sorted out and yes, fix stuff up. So it's not just hey you're gone. They talked. Yeah, we wish him the best for sure. Uh, John Cena to host the ESPYS. This came out last week. It's gonna be on ABC July thirteenth at eight p.m. I find this very interesting. I don't necessarily watch all the ESPYS. I'll catch the highlights here and there. They usually have. Someone from entertainment hosted every year. I think Cena is a really good um, mix between so you know he's in entertainment, but he's also a pro athlete, and uh, obviously he knows what he's doing. So I think um, I think it's a great choice. Um, I'm very interested because a lot yeah. of a lot of hosts will dig in on and, and make a lot of jokes about the athletes. I don't think Cena is going to do that. I think he wants to go the more positive route. Couldn't get corporate Kane. Well, he's coming up in the news. He he could have been great. He could have been a great host of the ESPYS. Dale John Cena. <laughs> I think it's a, a good for everybody involved, and, and especially 
I, I think it's just a byproduct of this new cool relationship that they have with ESPN. So I, I like seeing things like this where everybody gets to prosper from it. Yep, no doubt. Uh, speaking of Kane, though, Scott. Yes. Not necessarily corporate Kane. It could be political Kane. <gasps> He says he's considering running for mayor of Knox County, Tennessee in 2013. Mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Did, 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 you, say, did you say 2013? I'm sorry. Did I say 13? I meant 18. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Yeah, 18 makes more sense. Did I say, really? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, he, he's thinking about running five years ago, and we wish him head. Uh, we, 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 wish him, we wish him head? <laughs> sorry. I'm Al Snow's his running mate? We, <laughs> It's your severed head. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Cane and head. It's your severed head. That was the soundbite I was looking for, and as I was typing it in, I just I just reiterated what I was typing out loud and go, we wish him head, and <laughs> it came out. It's your severed head. Wow. Rats well, and head. I mean, to be honest, though, when you uh, do have political office, I guess you are more likely to receive certain things. Um... I like his stance on terrorists, that he'll just get a car battery and tie him up and shock their balls until he gets what he wants. Yep, that was a pretty... <laughs> <laughs> it's a policy we could all learn from, to be honest. And your testicles. Yep, mm -hmm. there it so is. So I'm glad you didn't just say testicles no, for no reason, no, Johnny. I you learned, typed it in. I learned from that mistake. This is a problem. I try, I try to do too many things at once on this damn show. Uh, but luckily I... Rats I, and know, heads and testicles. Oh, my. So much. And your testicles. All right, so if he does, I mean, Kane's another intelligent guy. I mean, the guy's brilliant. Yeah, but he's scary as hell. Nah, Glenn, Dale, we've stood next to Kane, Glenn Jacobs, and he's a lovely fellow. I mean, he's intimidating just on the sheer size, but, I mean, he carries himself in sort of a, a peaceful manner. Maybe he grew his hair up a little different. He could take those contacts out. He'd be fine. He's be very fine. astute with his baby hair. <laughs> yeah, seven foot, 300 pound mare. I mean, he's going to... That's that's a scary mare right there. Yeah, right. Can you imagine running against that dude? No. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeesh. But, I mean, all the stuff you have for your slanderous campaign against them where you go like, look at what Glenn Jacobs thought was okay <laughs> for kids' television viewing. Glenn Jacobs hooked up a car battery to an opponent's testicles. And your testicles. Glenn Jacobs thought it was okay to throw the daughter of Vince McMahon off a balcony. Glenn Jacobs once got into a car accident with a fictional character and she didn't make it out alive. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Isn't that how Katie Vick died? Sure. I think? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, through the tr uh, the comedy of Triple H is how Katie Vick died. <laughs> um, <laughs> and lastly in the Slamcast news, uh, Scott, try to hold your composure here. Oh, I can't. But a certain baby, oh, Max L. Hardy, won a match oh over the weekend. We don't know where this is from. FSW. Oh, is that what it's from? Yes. There's a there's a little video we're about to play here. Um, if if we can uh, play it's it, the the video is so good that it blows up internet, it blows up connections, it blows up minds. Yeah. That's how that's how crazy it is. It's Maxwell Hardy defeated uh, at this point, to my knowledge, an unnamed opponent. We don't know who it is. It's hard to tell by looking at the video. Uh, Ethan Carter the third is no longer undefeated. No. He couldn't keep it together. The Undertaker at WrestleMania couldn't do it. Not Can't anymore. Keep it together. Nope. Maxell Hardy is the greatest undefeated, youngest living wrestler <laughs> alive. How old is he? I think he's, is he probably six months or something? Probably. Doesn't matter. His wow. kid's got skills. You talk about Cody Rhodes and like, oh, it's in the family, it's in the genes. Yeah. Uh, it's clearly more so in the genes with Maxell Hardy. No, it's definitely in the genes. We got to get that kid on the show. Dale, we got to get, so Maxell Hardy... He, yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't mind being in front of a an audience. I mean, every time they bring him out there, he's just chilling. Yeah. Well, I mean, I want. I I I have mixed feelings on this baby being around this whole situation all the time. But I will say jealous. that this video shows a, a, it's pretty, a pretty decent cover, right? For a child. I mean, granted, he's, he's going to hook the leg. He's trying. <laughs> granted, when you put babies down, their arms go out just like a pin attempt. But That's it works. Instinct. Is it instinct? instinct? Instinct. All right. Don't get mad at me. I know Max L's your favorite performer. I know that. He's great. My butt would explode. I know how that's, excited you are. That's what happens with babies. They I, can't control well, that so much. I, and the bumps are tough. Yeah, well, it's... <laughs> so you can go to uh, Baby Hardy... 
You can, you can go to Baby Hardy Brand's Twitter account if you want yeah. to watch the video. You should be following that. Once I was made aware of this, I immediately followed that I'm account. I'm assuming it's got to be Matt doing it, right? What? What are you talking about? It, the it's, baby... just, it's just pictures of his mom holding him in different places. Well, now it's him getting a pin. A pin for all pins. Yeah. Why would you think the baby wouldn't be managing his own Twitter? Yeah. He won a match. Okay, look, he can clearly look, tweet. I'm not putting anything past... I know you believe in Maxell. I know that's your man. That's your hero. He's a great man. Well, with that said, that's your Slamcast News. All right, everybody, guess what? <laughs> Seth Rollins is <laughs> back, y'all. Uh, wow. He showed up the end of Extreme Rules, gave the pedigree to Roman Reigns, and then within the beginning... 10 minutes on Raw, we found out exactly where Seth Rollins stands, and that is exactly how he was standing seven months ago before he got hurt. Hmm. Hating everybody. I was surprised by that. I thought coming back, that pop at the pay-per-view was so extremely loud. I just would have figured that this was going, you know, the, the way of a face, 100%. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, and then Shane was very quick to come out and make that title match for Money in the Bank. Yeah, I I agree with Dale. I think it went against the grain of what was naturally going to happen, that Seth was going to be the most popular guy in the entire company, that everyone was so excited to see him back, and they just went, you know what? Nope, we're not doing it that way. And it felt very forced. It felt Seth was yeah. working really hard to go, no, no, I want you to boo me. So... Kind of yeah, and I think this this goes back to the way that they are booking Reigns is they don't want Rollins to be a stronger face than Reigns, who is their current you know babyface champion. But Dale, don't you think this is only going to make people rebel against Reigns even worse? I mean, this <laughs> this could get to a level beyond him facing AJ Styles as far as the the crowd being completely divided compared to what we're being shown on television. Yeah, I mean, the thing about AJ, AJ is that, you know, if you knew him, then you you loved him when he came in because of, of just how great his fanfare is from, from his previous uh, spots. But everybody's been hungry for Rollins to come back. I think even if you didn't like him as a character or as a performer, maybe, you still have felt a hole in the roster for a guy that is good on the mic like him and can make you feel something. So to me, I, I don't know. I just I, I really thought that they were going to have him come in and just ride that wave at least for a little while, and then have him. You know, you could do a short face run and then have him turn heel pretty quickly with a you know an easy an easy thing. So, but I don't know. I feel like maybe there's more than what it seems at the top because of the way that Stephanie treated him. I think maybe maybe we could get more out of this coming forward in the next few weeks. But yeah, just my initial reaction was was surprised. And also, there's a different style. To, you know, you have to work a different style when you know you're a babyface. And let's be honest, he, when he got hurt, I said nine months minimum with that kind of knee injury. I don't care how much rehab he does. I don't know how he's gonna. But here we are, not even seven months after he's been injured, he's back. Obviously, we're not gonna see him wrestle a match until Money in the Bank, which is three weeks, right? So you don't think there'll yep. be something in between, like a tag or something like that? No, I mean I, I don't think so. Maybe I'm wrong, but either way, it's only seven months since he got injured. When you work as a heel, you don't have to do as... When you're Seth Rollins, you're not going to be doing as much crazy stuff. I mean, remember, he would do the complete flips out of the ring. So I think maybe it'll start off as a heel kind of deal, and then may, once he feels fully comfortable again being himself, 100% in the ring, then maybe you can go into you know, a, a babyface angle. But uh, this is... Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I, would, I, would, I wondered about his knee, too, for... I mean, he came in, and, and the only thing he did was the pedigree. I, I feel like the pedigree... You know, you absorb it in your knees uh, when you're when you're the guy doing it. So I, I was wasn't sure if they were going to have him do that again or what. But you know, obviously it's safe enough for him to do. That's a, yeah. Oh well, yeah, pedigree for sure. Um, so I don't know. I mean, with that was that match was incredible at Extreme Rules. I mean, just him and AJ did everything they possibly could do to each other. Mm -hmm. And apparently that feud more or less is going to be over. And that that's another thing I was surprised is, you know... And the story makes sense. He never lost the title. He has every right to have a title shot. Mm -hmm. But man, AJ and Roman, that feud was so good. Like, that's the kind of feud, the, the way they did that back in the day, that could have lasted a year. 
Sure, but it's it doesn't feel like it's done either to me. I hope that not. It's you know this is the end of the chapter for now because now there's the fallout with the club. And Which, don't you think that was too soon? Well, AJ can't keep friends together. Look at Y two AJ. Look at the club. Like it's mm. some his hair is very polarizing. I guess so. You know, we heard Kevin Owens last week. Yeah, that's you true. Know, it's very polarizing his hair. It is. So He's got that soccer mom cut on lock. <laughs> so you know, it's it, there are some unusual things going on right now that feels like it is against the grain. We now that AJ is out of the title picture, that we thought, oh, all right, so him and the club are going to roll together. All right, well, that's not <laughs> happening. But there's clearly something in place. Um, and, you know, with Rollins that we're going, oh, so now he's going to be the big face of the company. Nope. All right. What's going on here? <laughs> I don't know. Everything that you could possibly think about, it's just not. Like, They're shaking it up, granted. Well, you could see, yeah, you could see fans, like, and uh, us included, we're trying to figure out, like, oh, like, oh, oh okay, then this is going to happen. Oh, wait. Uh, no, 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 it's not. Okay, let's let's try to calculate this. Other, how's this? Oh, no, that's not going to happen either. But then you take my 75% chance And of then winning. it becomes this. If we used to go one on one. And then add 66 and two thirds percent. I got 141 and two thirds chance of winning. That was basically what everyone was thinking out last night after. So like, Scott Steiner's book in the show. No wonder he it's might confusing. Be. He might be. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you, you know, my, what I was thinking about it is after watching Raw this week is that you know WrestleMania kind of used to be the end of the season, air quotes, you mm -hmm. know, for for TV wise. Um, you know, we did get some new things on that Raw after <laughs> WrestleMania, but <clears throat> overall. A lot of the major storylines kind of rolled over into um, payback and then uh, extreme rules. But as of Monday, I mean, with Rollins coming back and you have Cena next week and you have um, Charlotte having her, you know, breakdown with her oh, dad and, oh. and uh, with this feud being over, I mean, it feels like this is sort of what used to happen a couple of months ago, but it's happening just a little bit later this year where everything is getting a bit of a new start mm -hmm. right around now. Sure is. I mean, you have already five guys off one episode of Raw. Five, five guys are already in the Money in the Bank match. Yes, and like you mentioned, Dale, Charlotte just drops her daddy, and Ric Flair was so sad. Well, to be fair, Ric Flair is generally Crying. almost always sad. Yeah, but I mean, it was really, uh, it was very touching. Um, as a child. You had your hand in the candy jar. All the time. Always mm -hmm. had her hand in the candy jar. And, and then she, she was just... at home eating a ribeye. Well. You were always home eating a ribeye. Yeah. Which, that's a terrible combination, candy and a ribeye. As a baby, I would never want to, as a kid, I would never want to put candy and a ribeye together. That's, that's all Max L eats, guys. That, Ribeyes and candy. That's I read that on his, I read that on his Twitter. And you know why he eats diet plan for me. And you know why he eats a Dale? Off instinct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so Charlotte decides to do a complete 180. And you could see the wheels turning. You're like, oh, no. she's Is she really going to... She's going to axe her dad? Mm -hmm. And then she said these words. But you're just... To me... Dead. And then she sent him outside the ring. Like Isaac Hayes. Crying... And then they tried to get a word with him on the way out. He had nothing to say. And, uh, you know, this is a way to definitely um, bring Charlotte to that ultimate heel level. And uh, I thought it was well done. They gave her the freedom to get through it. Was mm -hmm. it the most smooth thing in the world between those two? No. But what I liked about it is it allowed her to work through it. It allowed her to fight the crowd. Yes. Which she which, was. And I and love she was it. great at it. I love it when wrestlers give it back to the audience. Because let's be honest, a lot of crowds are a-holes. And they try to ruin things. They try to become the stars of the show. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that she fought back and got through what she had to get through. And Rick, to his credit, man, he really got emotional. And it was... Um, it was sad, man. Yeah, it was. I, I uh, go ahead, Dale. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say. I, I think that uh, Charlotte's kind of becoming a master of of doing this. This uh, speech that she had to do when they inducted the new belt right after WrestleMania, she had to fight the crowd really hard on that one, and she reeled that one back in as well. This one, I think, was even a little bit on Rick's part, where I, I didn't really know what he was trying to say when he was. Uh, t talking to her, so I think she was uh, not only fighting the crowd, but maybe fighting, I don't know, a miscue from him or something. Something seemed off between the two of them I there. Mean, but he was a proud I, daddy. I, I think she's doing great. He was a proud daddy. It's just, you know, he's not, um, 
he shouldn't be saying a lot at this point. And well, you know, I like the the unusualness of the segment in that it did feel more real. Yes, that it wasn't formulaic. It wasn't so scripted. That there was odd beats. There was unusual stuff. And uh, I think it helped it play out better because now. People have been complaining for months that they've been fine with Ric Flair interfering and cheating for 40 years, Mm -hmm. and then now he's overshadowing his daughter. Well, there you go. Like, it's now the separation has been made, and she's all the more evil for it. Yeah. So it's elevating her. And I actually believed what she had to say about it, too. It wasn't just a storyline plot of, like, okay, now you drop your dad and Mm -hmm. you become mega heel. It's like, you're going to drop this. You know, nugget of knowledge of like you were never there for me as a girl, and Oof. so I'm I'm doing what you did to me. I I actually believed that that speech. I thought it was it was really well done. Well, it's like the song. It, it's essentially the cat's in the cradle. If you listen to the lyrics of that song, that's really what it's about. You know, the dad's never there for the kid as he as he's growing up, and then once the dad kind of becomes reliant on the kid, the kid's like, "Sorry, pops, maybe I'll see you down the road." Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of that story, and and I like I you know it played out really uh, really real. Yeah, I th- yeah. I think it was done it was done well. I I like it when they bring up the real story elements, the stuff that happened with Charlotte and Paige months ago that people found you know too upsetting about talking about Charlotte's brother. I like that stuff. Yeah, when it's done with with a good execution and being thought out, uh, I think it adds realism to it, and we know her story. Yeah, and speaking of good execution, uh, the Intercontinental title four-way, good God, love how Miz escapes narrowly with the victory. But many would consider match of the night. Certainly couldn't argue against that. I mean, it was just, you know, false finish after false finish. Just incredible chemistry between these four guys and everyone. And a hell of a opening. And a hell of a opening. And uh, everyone leaves a winner. Yeah, Miz still has the title. I love that, but everyone leaves a winner. Uh, it remains to be seen which way this will all go, because 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 of what happened on because, Raw. Because 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 Me. finish it because of the wonderful Rats Johnny owns. Okay. Dig it. Uh, Zayn, Cesaro, Jericho, Ambrose, and Kevin Owens are all in the Money in the Bank ladder match. So there you go. You got Zayn and Kevin Owens. They hate each other. Yeah, Cesaro <laughs> and. Uh, Jer- well, Jericho and Dean Ambrose hate each other, mm-hmm. and Cesaro is just a uh, just a freak of nature. So well, he's Swiss. He's neutral to everything. Good point. He's yeah. neutral, but he's still <laughs> a freak of nature. Well though. played. He uh, he actually is going for uh, the title again on SmackDown as well. That he is, and yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think it's 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 pretty interesting uh, with these guys. I'm I'm really I'm calling Jericho right now, even without the other two competitors. That uh, you know, I think Jericho's finally going to take it. Hmm. For yeah. money in the bank, really? Yeah, he, you know, it's, uh, it's. I, I think, I just, I think he's gonna be the guy to get it. You know, it, it, there's something about it I, where I feel he's, he, he, he's so great in his character right now. He lost the jacket. You know, he, he, he created this match long ago. It just seems like it's that he's always reinventing smarmy, himself, yeah. dragging time for him again. And he's always reinventing himself. And I think, uh, I think you're right. I think he could be the guy. I mean, a lot I, of these he is, he is the ultimate last uh, on my list of who could possibly get it. I think mm. he, he can do all of it without the briefcase, whereas somebody like Cesaro or Sami Zayn could really use a bump uh, with, with the briefcase like that that would help them out for, for the future. We also don't know how long Jericho's sticking around. I mean, sometimes his briefcase takes a while to True. cash in. So True, but I don't the, know. I mean, One thing I do want to say is that I was surprised that Apollo Crews didn't make it into this, but uh, it looks like maybe... Maybe they're going to start a program with him and Shaman. I'm not, I'm yeah, not sure. But. I just don't think they're very high on Apollo on the mic yet. And, you know, when you get to the main roster, yeah. that's a huge deal. I mean, you mm-hmm. look at what happened to Neville. He got to the main roster. He's not strong on the mic. And, unfortunately, he's hurt now. But he was kind of just, yeah, but you know. I think money in, the, money in the Bank is a place where you can not be good on the mic and still get time on the, on yeah. the card. No, good point. But I like him and Sheamus. But. I think that could totally – I think people will get invested in that. Yeah. You know what I think is weird is, speaking of Seamus, is that he has what is probably going to be one of the big blockbusters of the summer. Um, you know, they even made a, a trailer that's kind of like Seamus-centric to play on Raw, and they just couldn't have less for him to do right now on the show. I mean, maybe this Apollo Crews thing is going to be something, but it's interesting. This is like the fourth or fifth time they've had a major movie come out and somebody 
is, you know, on the show that's in a movie, and they just don't really seem to coordinate those two things very well ever. Yeah, it's it's really, really, really shocking. And I most of do not look stupid. And the other thing that's shocking too is most of the time they're not good guys when those movies come out. Yep. <laughs> But, I mean, uh, for a movie that couldn't be more up their demographic, you know, like, it just it just seems like such a missed opportunity unless he has to go do press for the movie across the world and so he's not able to be on it. But, I mean, I, he wasn't even on this pay-per-view that was sponsored by the movie. That's just so bizarre to me. I don't I don't understand how they can't pull that together. Well, I know Johnny, that... what would Master Splinter say about that? Master Splinter would say about Seamus not being on a pay-per-view? Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> that would be Master Splinter's response. Yeah, I mean, I think they're going to send him obviously to all the press junkets and all that kind of deal. So he'll be promoting it. It's just, um, yeah. The thing is, I think when don't forget, Seamus filmed this well over a year ago, I believe. I already yeah. forgot. So they had plenty of time to figure out a way to incorporate it into their programming. Yes. Go yeah, ahead. <laughs> but I, I think ideally like they really divas. they really wanted Seamus to be a, a strong baby face and the fans weren't having it and so he's back to being naturally what he should be. But they didn't do anything. League of Nations broke up which made it possible for anybody to be anything. Look, I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with explanations. He's playing a villain in the movie. He doesn't need to be a strong baby face. It would make sense to be this in some regard it's just it just i don't know anyway well, it's just something maybe, they've never really been able to master even when it's their own freaking movies well um, maybe I, I just think it's it's in a very odd that they don't communicate this better between the different departments well maybe beaker can show up from the muppets again and this time instead of getting along with him seamus crushes him and was like rock steady or is he bebop he's rock steady isn't he yes okay so there you go best of both worlds the muppets got canceled johnny this is a horrible idea <sighs> Johnny, you got to keep up on the, the entertainment. The, the Muppets never get canceled. They're always around, guys. <laughs> Come on. Uh, let's, anyway. Speaking of money in the bank, though. His favorite Muppet well, is Well, there's two, two things I want to want to touch on before we move on. Don't you think this is the year for a, a, a women's money in the bank? Wouldn't that be phenomenal? Ooh. I don't think it's going to happen because we're only three weeks away, but damn it if it's not the perfect year for it. I just don't want anyone yeah, else that, to well, get hurt. Well, yeah, if Sacha is injured and Nikki's still out, I don't know if it's good point. They might not have the best year, but yeah, they might. I mean, I'm saying progression-wise, it's the best year, but injury-wise, you're right. There is not. They might not even have seven to put in the match. Yeah, that's it's a yeah. it's a cool idea, but yeah, I just don't want any more injuries. I'm already worried about these amazing five competitors going in. <sighs> I know that's a good. Yeah, yeah, I know, but just. I would love to have it happen, but you're right. It probably 2017 might be the better option. And lastly, uh, not Lashley, not Lashley. We actually we could talk about him a little bit. Back to the main event of Extreme Rules. Um, you heard the chants in the audience. Can we please have Moppy again? Moppy and can we stop saying that Roman Reigns can't put on a good match? For Christ's sake, I'm going to give credit to one of our listeners, Lance Levine, um, from Chicago. Who, uh, who actually said, he's like, you put a mask on that guy, and people would not be booing him if they didn't know it was him. Mm. You know? Okay. So he could be Doink. I... Oh, jeez. Yeah, nobody ever booed Doink. Um, <laughs> I think that this is, is, it's very much the Cena syndrome. It's like, we're going to just not like this because we know that you want us to like it. Like, I don't even know if it's really about, it's more of a visceral reaction than it is anything about his ability like yeah they say you know you still suck or whatever but I, I don't think they mean moveset wise even per se I think it's just like this weird I'm not gonna do it like for I, I won't like this guy because yep. you pushed him too hard like I don't I don't really understand it but I, I do think that it's an unfair judgment on Roman Reigns agree so uh, moving on we gotta get through a whole bunch of stuff here because our special guests are gonna be here very very soon uh, when it comes to NXT let's run down a couple things here Aries uh, Austin Aries team with Nakamura they crush Blake and Murphy kinda interesting because Aries is going for the tag at the end Nakamura's like nope finishes him off himself and then Alexa bolts and then she just chastises him backstage which I loved so we've already talked about how she has moved on from them. Now she's officially moved on for them, mm -hmm. which is great stuff. Uh, Nia Jax defeats Bailey. What's up with that? Shocker. A little bit. But, I mean, you know, maybe 
I don't know, maybe, Bailey, it might be her time to go up to the main roster. Uh, Carmella defeats Peyton Royce and Gargano and Ciampa win. Uh, so, yeah, just a couple progression type angles uh, in NXT and, you know, building up towards TakeOver in a few weeks. Mm hmm. Two, two things I want to say about that. Nia Jax and Bailey have faced off before, and, and Bailey always had the better end of it, so I think it's okay that Nia gets, gets one of them. And uh, number two, not Bobby Roode. We thought, we thought for sure that's who Austin's partner was going to be. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. And I like, there's a really interesting uh, thing there between Nakamura and Aries. You know, the, the not tagging in thing, and Aries is like, huh, all right. Like, you see the wheel spinning, like, should I get pissed off here? No. Nah. Like, well, Bobby Roode would have done it. Yeah, the dirty heels. We work well as a team. I loved it. And uh, now we got to get to Impact and Lucha. Impact was weird. Um, the Billy Corgan Super special. Weird. Yeah. So Matt Hardy is fake Willow. Um, One of them. Mike Bennett wants to be a Hall of... He wants to beat up a Hall of Famer, so he chose Earl Hebner, who took his Good shirt boy. off. Bennett then beat him. Oh yeah, Bennett. and Earl kicked out. Earl did kick out, which that is a, was amazing. A great kick out. That was amazing. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, uh, I lost it then. That was amazing. Then within five minutes during the next match, um, his son Brian Hebner came out to referee a match like his dad didn't just get destroyed, like nothing even happened. Uh, the one I don't want to say the one positive because we do support the show. We love watching. Uh, there was many positives so far in my book. Okay, there you go. Uh, Cherry Bomb made her debut as Maria's intern, and she. Great character. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the reason Velvet Sky got fired for losing her match. And in the main event, there was a Lumberjack match that we assume ended in a no contest because everyone just started flipping all over each other. It did. Once they pulled, uh, I think it was Drew out of the ring, the, the referee rang the bell. It was disqualified. So it was. I, I, I didn't really understand mm -hmm. the booking on that match. So that would be the, the final match of the night. I felt like it just fell apart and like everybody was like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to do a big move. <laughs> Oh yeah! I do a big. I was just like, "What is happening in this event?" That's pretty it was much very what strange it was. to me. I didn't like it. Yep. It was. It, yeah. I mean, we love the show every week. This week was a uh, a strange one. We had another fact of life. We did have a fact of life. That was the. That was huge. That was gigantic. That Loved was, it. That was hilarious. I felt. I, did you like that? Bram kind of no sold the whole thing though it was it was kind of weird on on his side i thought that he wasn't really playing along which is weird if you're going to come out there and do it he just was like i don't know wasn't really Gummy. giving him yeah. anything to work with yeah. yeah bram did not he was just being too cool for school um which yeah. didn't do anybody and eli drake was working really hard and he he was awesome he was i think he, it's kind of how bram just is uh, but Eli playing cowardly, and then he's going to be tough. Is puffing up his chest, and then again, like says, not right now. I thought he did a he did an amazing job. For I agree, Dale, that Bram did not. Yeah, he was not on point with Eli. But this feud could be good if it leads to Eli taking the King of the Mountain title off him. Dummy, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're all on board with that. And I'm all on board for as many willows as we can get. Oh yeah, there's so many willows. Uh, I thought Matt Hardy. Any did a guesses good job. on who the other willows are? You think they'll actually be characters, or will they just be like nah. random willows that keep popping up? Just, I think it'll be people. I think random willows. I think it'll be people. They might never show up again. You never know. Who knows? Who knows? I, I like I like the idea of Matt Hardy being more crazy. I don't I don't know what blonde streak has to do with it, but I do like him. You know taking this character and trying to stretch it some more because he, you know, I was not a big Matt Hardy fan on the microphone, especially. Um, and this this character, this heel character of his has kind of won me over a little bit. And then now to see him even kind of making it more complex. I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes. Remember. I thought Hardy did a good job. He almost mm -hmm. even like went with an accent, which was, which was well done. Um, it's just, it seems like a lot of things are being rushed, but hey. You never know, but once again, um, Cherry Bomb's been on the indie scene for a long time, and she even mentioned a uh, little wordplay in her uh, interaction with Velvet Sky. She's like, yeah, pretty Cherry gig. I really like the character. I thought it was well done. And, of course, Velvet's now uh, fired. It was time for her to move on. We wish her, uh, wish her best of luck. Lucha Underground, yo, Vampiro does some creepy torture stuff to Pentagon Jr. Dale. That was uncomfortable to watch. These two, this relationship just gets weirder and weirder. I, uh, I'm definitely interested to see how, how long they're able to carry this forward and, and what exactly comes out of it because it's just bizarre but super entertaining bizarre. Yeah, big time. Um, and Vampiro, man, like 
he totally switches personas going from announcing to the sensei master guy with the weapons <laughs> I'm trying to ha I'm waiting for you to jump in here Scotty I was wondering what that was well I was waiting for you Vampiro can do anything this guy he has proven this uh, in Lucha Underground that he is a man of many hats yeah. or masks as you if you will uh, he when he turns into that psychotic character I mean Dean Ambrose is great but when you see something like this you go all right, Dean. It's a little soft. You could crank it up. You know, if they had a crazy contest between the two of them, Vampiro right now is I mean, going to put Dino to shame. Oh yeah. That's that's what the joy of Lucha is too. Is that they really let them run with whatever it is that they've got. I mean, uh, I don't know if you saw the the hashtag Get Famous sign. Was that at Raw or was that at the pay per view? I can't remember, but I wasn't sure I think if it was, it was the a, a Lucha reference, but. I mean, I, I will say characters, to your point, it's like, you know, Dean Ambrose is supposed to be crazy. He had an asylum match, of all things, you know, to kind of emphasize that character trait. And, I mean, when you look at somebody like Vampiro or <laughs> half, half the guys on the roster, really, at Lucha Underground, it's it's true. You don't you don't really get that he's crazy. You get that he's like, you know, a little uh, a little, a little crazed, maybe, but he, he's definitely not on this level of uh, character that, that Vampiro is at. No, and I absolutely love what Chavo did. Uh, he stole the medallion from Brian Cage last week. He outquicked him and kind of fooled him into thinking he had the medallion in his hand, which he didn't. He stuck it on that little that belt, which meant he got to compete in the Gift of the Gods championship match. So Brian Cage is like, all right, I'll do you one better. He ends up helping Chavo win and then gets set up for this week. He takes on Chavo for the Gift of the Gods championship. Well done. Bravo, Chavo. Who says... No, I'm saying, though, who says that Brian Cage, he may be a big old machine, but he's got some brains behind it. So now him versus Chavo, and I like Chavo, just the, the being the smarmy guy that he's always been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chavo, Chavo's doing great right now. I mean, we say that to no end, that all these guys are just really great there. Yeah. So last thoughts on uh, Lucha Underground Dale. Uh, keep doing how they're doing. I loved it, and and I've, I've this whole season. You know, when you have such a strong first season, you never know if you're going to be let down by a uh, sophomore slump, as they call it. But I have to say, so far, so so good. Absolutely. You know, one quick thing before we get to our guests. Uh, uh, I'm hoping they're here. I think they're here. I don't know. Uh, I, I, if you guys haven't had a chance to see it since it's such a quick turnaround from uh, last night to today, uh, Shane McMahon Tell All Podcast. Did you see it? I only saw about a little bit of it. Dale? No, I didn't get to watch it yet. Okay, well, next week I, I ask. Oh, well, wait a minute. Oh, the special guests are here. The party has begun, everybody. Razzle Mattel. Razzle Mattel. Scotty, you better move your chair over here. I am setting up the thing for the The champs are here. The United Tag Team Champions. The sweetest man in the world and the boxcar superstar, the hobo in Jervis Cotton Look at my shirt, buddy. Oh, that's a new one. Okay. I love it. Well, please, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, sir. Welcome to the show. Have a seat. Join the party. Put the belts down. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, Dale, you're still with us. I am, but I'm going to have to tag these guys in as I tag out because I, I have to hit the road. But Jarvis, welcome, Hobo. I can't believe we haven't had Hobo on the show before. It's blowing my mind. I know. We finally have them on. Uh, we've What's up, Dale? <laughs> hey, buddy. So, so, Dale, you got to uh, Yeah, I'm going I'm to tag you all in and, and head on the, on the road. i got to get to class. You know, trying to get my last few classes in before I uh, head off. So. Well, on the bright side, Dale, you couldn't have a hotter tag right now. So if you're leaving, you're leaving. Right? Under, you know? So Run through those guys, fella. Well, before you leave, uh, put yourself <laughs> over, buddy. Uh, you can find me at The Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter. Like I said, please hit me up and let me know if you're going to the Rev Pro show in the UK on uh, June 12th or 13th. I can't remember, but um, let me know if you're going to be there. Definitely love to hang out, grab a drink, talk wrestling. There and no doubt. And the next week, wherever you are, you will be calling in. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll call in. It'll be some odd 
time LA to Paris is weird, but uh, I'll, I'll sort it out. Dale, you know, I don't thanks. care what time it is. You're calling in, okay? <laughs> you don't have an option. Yeah, you don't have an option. You're calling in. I don't care if you got to wake up and do it in your PJs. You're calling in. <laughs> Bonjour. All right, see you, buddy. All right, bye, guys. All right, bye. so everyone, if you're not watching this on YouTube, go find it on YouTube because we have them right here in studio, those beautiful United Tag Team titles Because you really got to see us to grasp the grandeur that is the Friendship Express. Those yeah, things are beautiful. The Friendship snow. Express are in the house. Those things are nice. I'm nice. I got my hand kissed. Yeah, no, me too. <laughs> are you... Are you you're very uh I'm starstruck. Okay. This is Good. one of my new favorite tag teams. I will. Oh, oh yeah. From the That's inception of, sweet of you of you guys coming together and the match of becoming contenders and now becoming champions so quickly. Yeah. From the power of friendship. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes, because um, we firmly believe that friendship will save us all. It really will too. Yeah. You gotta unite. You gotta come together. Because there's so many people who wanna who wanna squash you. Mm -hmm. Stop on your dreams, and it's through unity that we can stop those and really promote love and friendship and kindness. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yep. Well, tell us. I mean, I, I think the message you really give out is is on a global scale. Really, it's not just about you two as friends. The message you give out to the world is that this can all be that way, and the world can be a better place. Absolutely. Yes, yes I like to think so. Um, you know, love. It comes in many languages. Yeah. And as long as you show that you're willing to believe in each other and lift each other up instead of putting each other down, then I think the world will be a better place. Unity! It's all about unity. That's right. Unity. It is. What I mean, that? Who, who said that? Well, I'll don't. They've got a soundboard. There's no one else here. What's there a are no, there are no a ghosts. Soundboard, uh, Jervis. It's, um, well, uh, you know when you watch something on television? Is that? Uh, yes, yes. You've seen, you've seen the telly? Of correct? course, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you know how you can hear things from the television. We take um, a little clip of, of the sound mm. that we might think pertain to the show, mm -hmm. and then we put it on a computer. Oh, I see. Yes, mm -hmm. like and that one there. Th this one right here, as of a course. matter of fact. And so I could just hit a little button. Uh, for can example, I, I, I say, one? I say, uh, Jervis should say what letter or number he'd like to hear. I, I, yeah, I think any letter, any number from Ooh. one to nine, or any letter of the alphabet. Uh, I can play something it's for the you. Power of, <laughs> it's the power of a soundboard. How yeah. about lucky number seven? Lucky number seven. You sure? Are you I sure? I am sure, yes. Oh, that was fun. Can we <laughs> try another? <laughs> uh, sure, give us another okay, one. How about number three? Number three. You've got me mad now. See, that's Ooh. a guy... Oh, who did I get angry? I'm sorry. He needs, that's a guy that needs friendship. Oh, well, good. I, I, wish I, I wish I could give him a hug. I now, now, can I make a special request? Yeah, yeah. It, could I possibly be on that soundboard someday? Well, I would love you to be on the soundboard. What, what should I say? I mean, I think you guys should both come up with sound uh, sound bites that okay. we could put on the board. I think I have one. Let me try. You're oh, ready? my God. I would I'll count that. us down. Razzmatazz! <laughs> nice. That, <laughs> that's what all the cool kids down at Venice Beach Skate Park say. Is that yeah. where you got the hat? Mm. And the shirt. I was yes. going to ask. What, yeah. what do you think of my outfit? This is my skateboarding shirt. I got to tell you, uh, you have put a really good... I'm now... We all know the boxcar superstar. Oh, Since yeah. he came back from Australia, he got the dental work. Oh, yeah. He's a changed man. Mm, quite a makeover. Yeah, as far as he's a, he's a fashionista. And his hair smells lovely. Mm -hmm. Really? Give it a smell. Come on. Get all right. Go ahead, Scott. Oh, it's like raspberries. Yes, it is. Is it? Yeah. Snozzberries, even. You see, wow. Yeah. I guess you all have been drugged. This is great. <laughs> it's working. I mean, we all know that Hobo's been a fashionista since returning to the States, but you have really put a heck of a package together. Oh, yes, indeed. I am. I've been spending <clears throat> some time down at the uh, the Horse in the old skateboarding park, and I, um, I've been trying to adopt some new Los Angeles styles because uh, now with the championship wrestling from Hollywood, United Tag Team Champions. And all eyes are on you. Yes, indeed. So I want to make sure to look as freak as possible. Oh, wow. That's we're, a word that you don't We're know. trying to adopt different styles, mm. like, from each other. Like, mm -hmm. I've got a... Look at a sports coat. It's, like, it's, this it's, is pretty... It's got patches. Well, if it's I recall correctly, that looks almost like um, a smoking jacket that maybe Sherlock Holmes might wear. Which, mm. right, anything's it's possible. It's a nice observation. I yeah. don't think of myself as, as a Holmes. I'm more of a Watson. Okay. You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I hold it down. I'm not necessarily the, the brains of the operation, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely the more violent. No. Yeah, I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is why I love you guys as a team, because look, no one's perfect, but when people come together to help each other out and have each other's back, 
that's where greatness can happen. And that's what happened between you two. Because you had you, you both have plenty of strengths, but you've also had a couple of shortcomings. You know, for example, Jervis, I know uh, you you tend to uh, faint. Ooh. Yes, especially when I climbed to the top rope. Which, you know what, we have an amazing picture uh, of you. I think we can maybe show it. Let's hope we can. Uh, there's a picture of you at a recent taping where everyone was outside the ring. And you fainted from the top rope. Well, yes, originally I wanted to do a polite little um, dive onto them and, you know, squash the, the whole cluster of vermin. But um, well, when I climbed to the top rope, I got too frightened and I fainted. But as you know, Hobo, it worked out perfectly. That was fantastic. I, mean, I flipped out. Oh, I saw you celebrating. <laughs> I, I'm, oh, sit, I'm four feet away on commentary. I see you just fist pumping, <laughs> knowing your partner just took everybody out. And there's an amazing picture where you're literally fainting. You're in midair. You got heels together and everything. It's, it's I absolutely love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who turned yeah. that? Who Everybody that? can hear it better. I don't know. But we do have the yeah, pictures. If anyone's watching on YouTube, we have a bunch of really cool pictures of you guys. Let's uh, see if we can show them. I don't know if we can, but... We're, we're bringing them up. We got Maxwell Hardy, you know, he's still blowing up the internet. No, so. he ruined everything. Well, I said, my, my faint-based offense is something that Hobo's helped me adapt here. So, I suppose, um, because we're such good friends, uh, we've been able to be honest and forthcoming about our weaknesses, and we've actually used them to our advantage. Right, well, it's, it's a lack of ego, so if I know mm. he's going to faint, I'm going to sort of plan for it. I'm going to lean into that left hook, used him, so to speak. You've used his fainting as a weapon. I've yes. seen you actually, as he's fainting, I've seen you throw him into opponents. Right, yes. use him as a projectile. You and know, that even made him faint on top of other people. Yes, he frightened me so much that I fainted right onto Joey Ryan. Well, I, I, you'd absolutely did, which brings me to now the hobo. One thing that could be said about you, besides the fact that you're a former heritage champion yeah. and you're a man of the people, sometimes your temper gets the best of you. And we, no, 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 say that in a nice way. Don't make say that, that face. Nice don't way. make that face. Johnny, say it in a nice way. Oh, okay, no. so sometimes your, your, your temper, it's, uh, it's a strength of yours. Yeah. But it didn't always end up to your advantage. And I think what Jervis has done, he's helped you rein that in. A little bit. Yeah, I gotta say, it's it's. Mm. I get I get a little caught up in the moment, Ooh, a little calm heated. Down. No but I mean, Jervis is, is always trying to bring it back down. Now, He's now, always trying practice? to keep me from doing, you know, like bad things. It, sometimes I now. just I sometimes I have to. You have to when you get worked up, you say serenity now. Serenity now! Yes, indeed. Serenity now! I'm gonna say that next time I cold cock a guy. Oh. Serenity now! I'm gonna knock him out! No, we talked about he's that. Feel it. Open fists, open fists. Oh, open fists. Karate strikes. Uh, uh, Karate okay. strikes, palm thrust. Palm thrust. To the nose. Sure. Oh. Driving the, uh, the nose into the brain. Oh. Yep. I'm going to say oh, no, no, don't, don't, don't. Oh. No, no, you're fine. Not now. You're fine. You got it? I know, Scott, you, uh, you use the palm thrust every now and then. I do, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't have as much anger, though, but uh, is there anything that's ever affected you, Hobo, that maybe you've almost fainted and Jervis was able to stop you from fainting? Uh, no. There is collectively nothing that can make me faint. Nothing I can figure, really. No, It'd no, be pretty extreme. He's fearless and faintless. Yeah. And that is what makes a great tag team. That, yeah. yeah, they do compensate for the, each other in every the way. The yin and the yang. We fill gaps. Right. As, as the great Rocky Balboa once said. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did say that, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He yeah. said a lot of things. You know, Phil Gibbs. Bully! He said a lot of things. I don't think he ever said bully. I don't think he said that. Oh. That was Teddy Roosevelt. Mm. Which, he was a he was an ass kicker in his time. He sure was. Yeah. language. Oh, all right. Okay, sorry, Mom. I know, I know the training regimen involves oh. no cuss words and in bed by 10 p.m. And uh, no junk <laughs> food. Well, no I've, seen, junk I, food. I, I've seen you carbo-loading. Right! Yeah. That's not oh. junk food! Now, I don't know about the validity of carbo-loading. It sounds like just eating a bunch of pizza and um, laying around. That's... And being a load. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's part of it. Yeah. But then you gotta go out and, like, run really hard. Then you gotta go and wrestle. You yeah. gotta conserve the energy, eat a lot, but the last... and then conserve it so that you can spend it kicking butt in the ring. The last time that you went and ran really hard after eating a bunch of pizza, I was scrubbing the carpets all night long. 
I, I overdid it that one time. Yeah. One time. Well, I know you're a toppings guy. You put a lot of toppings on your pizza. Well, yeah. <clears throat> why, why wouldn't you? Um, like, variety is the spice of life. I'm not criticizing. You got to get the ham with the pineapple with the jalapeno. You know, you got to go all the way. I don't know about that jalapeno. Jalapenos make me faint. So let's <laughs> ask that. You know, they, they give me heartburn, but they make you faint. That's fine. Well, that's it's pushing <clears throat> your body to the limit to get it ready at its peak. That's right. That's that's how I've been able to survive. Yeah. Like that's you. You have to go as far as you can go, and then you're there. And then when you think you've gone as far as you can go, you can go a little bit further. And that's the point of being torn completely in half. And I love that feeling. I absolutely thrive on it. Oh, Jervis, 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 oh, 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 oh. catch him. Oh, him. You know what? Let's let's tone it down. Let's check out some pictures here of you guys. Oh, yeah, pictures. Oh. <laughs> let, let Jervis catch his breath. Oh, Breathe. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about ripping in half. Well, oh, he's the I'm sweetest flummoxed. man alive. And that was shortly after you guys won the United Tag Team titles. Yep. Oh, yes. It's pretty much a perfect dynamic. I love that photo. Great lighting. Look at my abs. Got abs. A lot of abs. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have really quite impressed. a set of um, chest muscles. And that's right after you guys won that virtually. That's right after. Yeah. Yes, only seconds after. Oh, yeah. I was so proud that day. As was, you should be. It was really great. Oh, and here's all four of us. All, well, no longer a, uh, a current champion, oh, James yeah. Morgan, but this at the time was our current heritage champion, television champion, and of course a tag team champions right there. I think James will get it back though. There oh! it is! There's the classic photo, Jervis oh, fainting man. on top of everybody, and then there's, uh, well there's Joe, I'm the guy in the orange, and then there's Joe Kelly sitting there on commentary. Uh, what a day that was. Oh, that was my, fantastic. That, I don't remember that at all. It's a good thing I was knocked out for that because I, I would have fainted if I yeah, wouldn't. Yeah, you, you really you made the decision to climb to the top, which I, I find admirable. Oh, and yeah. then you just sort of couldn't quite capitalize. No, in, in not doing it, you still did it. So oh, even no. in, in And what? who won the match? No, we did. You did specifically. You made the pin. Because he's the big dog. That's right. Woof, woof, the, big dog. Ah, the top ah. rope is like the jalapenos of the ring. Yes, yep. indeed. So I climbed that jalapeno and I fainted right onto the lot of them. That's right. <laughs> now, right you know, that it, it brings me to a good point because before I climbed the top rope, I was feeling <laughs> quite the frenzy. And I think that that's a frenzy that can only happen to professional grapplers. Sometimes when the crowd gets behind you and they start chanting for something or asking for something and raucously and loudly, but sometimes you just can't help but deliver. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, um, the agency that the fans have in that sense yeah. is often underestimated. Which the connection the fans have to both of you is unmatched. I mean, the fans love the Friendship Express. Well, it's it's not like anything else. Professional wrestling, there's an actual living tie between the audience and the, the people who are in the ring. That's not like film or television or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Because the audience actually does control, to a degree, what happens in that ring. Oh, just like they made me climb that top rope. Because exactly. they were chanting for it and mm -hmm. screaming for it. And I said, I think I can do it. And as soon as I got up there, I said, oh, no, I can't. Boom. I've kicked out of things that really no man should have kicked out of. Oh, I've seen because that. Because of the fact that the fans were behind me. Mm -hmm. That they gave me the energy that I was able to just make that effort just to throw my shoulder up which is I mean you've won, you've won a dumpster match I did won a dumpster match uh, I beat Willie Mack twice which is that's alone that's a feat he's, he's so much better than I am that's the hardest part of that but well don't fans, sell yourself short but hey. when the fans support you it's it's a palpable measurable um, energy that you can feel and and the friendship express tries to harness that as best as possible well let's talk about how you guys came to be because obviously um hobo you've been in championship wrestling for quite some time you know, jervis you're uh you came a little bit later mm -hmm. in, in the program um how did your backgrounds are completely different i mean you grew up essentially without a home well, more or less i i had a home everybody has a home sure uh, but i left it yeah. And that was that was back in Hoboken. I lived it years ago, because there wasn't anything there for me. Mm -hmm. And I said, I am not going to sit around and wait for something positive to happen. I'm going to make life happen. Mm -hmm. So I started to travel illegally, essentially, because you're not supposed to ride on a train without a ticket. But yeah. that's the sort of thing you have to do if you want to make life happen. And Jervis, you might want to earmuff this. He's he's talking about illegal activity. I know Ooh. it's not exactly Ooh. your mildly, mildly illegal. <clears throat> okay. Just a little a little law breaking. 
Not a biggie. Right, but you had you got to where you had to go to. Right, and that's I think that's that's the key to living for people. Don't wait for it. Go get it. Which explains good? exactly what you did in championship wrestling. I mean, when you first came in the doors, you weren't handed opportunities. You had to fight for an opportunity, and once you were even, once you even remotely were given a ball, you never dropped it. No, you have to recognize <clears throat> opportunities when you when you're handed them. And if you do drop it, it's over. Yeah. So I love pressure. You were on a very short, you know, a, I don't want to say very short leash, but you knew that when you had a chance, it very well may be your last. And you took full advantage of that, and the fans really jumped on board. I love it. It's like walking on a razor's edge. I absolutely dig it. There's nothing like the chaos of, you know, absolute defeat or absolute victory. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what wrestling is. It's either feast or famine. If you if you lose, you're not going to make the money you need. But if you win, then you get that winner's purse and it helps you that much more. Mm -hmm. And that's that you have to keep that in mind. It's it's a live or die business. It's not wins or losses. Yeah. It's live or mm -hmm. die. Well, initially, what did you really have to lose? So you probably had the greatest fighting spirit more than anybody. Right. So lose, I, I still get a little bit of money, and that's really all I wanted, but after a while, it's it's perception. It's everybody else in the locker room goes, oh, look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's back again. He's back again to lose. And I never wanted that perception for myself, so I just started focusing. And I started making myself into a, a better weapon. And that's that's how I started to beat guys. I just I did the research and I worked on myself mm -hmm. without an ego because I know what I'm not good at, so I have to change those weaknesses into strengths so that I can fight and then win. And who would have thought I don't want to call it lightning in a bottle. But I even you, when you first came in, to think you would eventually have a long run as a heritage champion, I don't think anyone saw that coming. But I, I think I didn't. I had no clue. I mean, once the connection with you and the fans, and you were producing in the ring, you were stacking up victories, you couldn't be denied. And once you were given that opportunity, and I'll never forget that dumpster match when you won the Heritage Championship. I mean, that's that's a historic match. Only one we've ever had in 260 episodes. Yeah. I, I rewatched that recently, and I think I said something into the camera at the, at the end of the match after I had won. I just looked at it and said, what are the odds? <laughs> Because that's that's perfect. I am the dark horse, and I know it. Mm -hmm. No one's yeah. going to bet on me, but if you do, man, the money, the dividends are gonna be fantastic. You're the underdog, and that right there, he's the big dog. Yes. Woof, woof, yes, them. Um, but you know, I was actually going to say that uh, the reason that I went and sought out the hobo after almost a year of performing a championship wrestling from Hollywood is because I felt that I was ready um, to start winning. And I was having matches where I was getting very close sure. um, against perhaps Ryan Taylor and Kevin Martinson, um, even Yuma. Amazing I, talents, all part of Vermin. Ugh. Yes, and I, I was really grappling them hard, and I, I was trying my best. Uh, but I, I couldn't seem to crack that that winner's circle, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then I went down to the train tracks, and, well, I found uh, the hobo in his merry band of, um, well, hobos and Misfits hobets. and whatever. Yeah. Yes, yep. yes, and, um, well, I say they taught me the ways of um, being fierce. Roar! <laughs> whoa, hey, whoa. Jervis, <laughs> do you want us to faint? Boo! Okay. I love it. He's keeping me on my toes. Sorry, sorry. Every <laughs> once in a while, it, it, the, the, the madness overtakes me. I suppose uh, fierceness. If, if you're say. listening to this while oh, driving right fierceness. now, we, we apologize if you're in your car and you're driving. I'm sorry. Well, I insurance will you know, cover I, that. Yeah. I, I, am, I am wearing a backwards hat, so, you know, all bets are off today. Wow. That's right. Ah! Oh, my God. Rasmus! Jervis, can I ask why why Hobo? Why of all the superstars in championship wrestling from Hollywood, all the wrestlers that are in the world, you sought out Hobo? Well, you know, just as he mentioned, he always felt that he was a bit of a dark horse. And um, even though my belly is cotton white, I always felt quite like a black sheep. And no matter how many people I teamed up with, they always seemed to leave me by myself. Um, but... Hobo was someone who showed me true friendship from day one, and even though he was traveling the world and he was trying to really earn his dream and, and get to the next level in professional wrestling, he came back for me, and he decided to show me the winning ways of the Friendship Express, and, well, I say that's how we got here now, is because he wanted to um, make sure that another black sheep or, or another dark horse 
uh, didn't get left in the dust, and together we're two glowing white bunnies. Which, uh, <laughs> and the bunny hop is one of your uh, signature moves. Yeah. Now my question is crushing a man's sternum with your bare feet. Yeah, that's bunny hop. Yeah, no doubt about that. Now, well, you know, you have taught me a thing or two about a knockout blow. You, you got to use it. If you got it in your arsenal, you got to use it. Because mm-hmm. you can be sweet, but the rest of the world is not as sweet. So you got to well, be able to bring. Speaking of which, the guys that you took the titles off of, Ooh. the yeah. monsters, cold, cold world. Mm-hmm. I mean, together, probably close to six hundred pounds. Well, I would oh, say yeah. so. They, but, they carbo load a lot. They carbo load a ton. Yes, yes, indeed. And um, a lot of pizza. Maybe they take down whole steers with nothing but their teeth and just <laughs> eat it raw. Maybe. But we noticed a chink in their armor, and when we decided that um, that things weren't all well and good over in the cold, cold world, uh-huh. uh, Herbo and I decided to um, warm, warm, warm them up. And um, well, after our tag team match, we took advantage of their dissension. And uh, we were able to claim these wonderful, prestigious United Tag Team Championships. There there certainly was dissension, because, I mean, even with Caesar Black at ringside, who usually, you know, he's the mad scientist, he's always the X Factor, you guys, talk about overcoming the odds. Not only were these guys the most dominant tag team we'd seen, possibly ever in the history of the show, Caesar Black is also at ringside. You guys found a way to overcome all of that. Oh, yes. It, it's a head game. All of that's a head game. The masks that they wear, their physical appearance, it's meant to put you in a place of of being afraid. And once we decided not to be afraid, it, it that was it. Mm-hmm. We could see they were scared. Well, you decided not to be afraid, and I channeled your strength. Right. <laughs> we went to the beach, we hung out, and then we oh, wrestled. The so beach you, party you guys had? Yes. After winning those titles? Oh, good lord. Well, you know, that was... Coastline that, clash. So some people would say, oh, they weren't preparing for their match. They were being silly at the beach. But I uh, would sp- respond with this. Actually, what Hobo was trying to do was to keep me calm and from having an anxiety attack of uh, having to grapple 600 pounds of raw human flesh. Yeah. Uh, so by doing that and bringing me to a fun little beach party and bringing the party to the ring, we were able to keep it light and breezy. Well, really? let us not forget. Go ahead, Scott. Oh, you got to be careful, though, out on the beach with a cotton belly. I don't know what SPF you use. Ooh, I say I cover my cotton belly up um, with SPF 100. As you should. Yes. That's good, yeah. Well, people say, you know, you're you're goofing around on the beach. Let's be honest, though. You can train. We've seen Rocky Three. Yeah. You yes. can train plenty well on the beach. Oh, yes. There was quite the montage at the ocean front. Uh, we were splish splashing around and hugging warmly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm Carl Weathers. <laughs> that would make that's sense. That's the other soundbite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's your soundbite. I'm Carl Weathers. I think that's the way to use it. Works so, where do we go from here? You guys are the very proud United Tag Team Champions. The United uh, Network is literally all over the, the country. All over the world, too. All over the world. So, I mean, what's next? Right now, I think we gotta we got to be focused on the red carpet rumble that's coming up. Yes, July 10th. If you're in Southern California, this is the... Look, all our events are amazing. We talk about them all the time. But July 10th is our biggest one of the year. Mm-hmm. Sunday, July 10th. If you're anywhere near Southern California, I'm giving you advance notice. We are giving you advance notice. Get there. Absolutely. So go ahead. So that red carpet rumble, that's going to be our next real defense. Yes. Um, and it's going to be against multiple tag teams. Oh, boy. That are currently qualifying on television. But, you know, to that effect, um, we are prepared to take on any tag team in the professional wrestling circuit, whether it be in championship wrestling from Hollywood, or perhaps in Chikara, or old wrestling, or even... NXT. I mean, it's an open-door uh, policy. Yes, indeed. The United Tag Team Champions, the United World Tag Team Champions, are also not beholden to these United States. We would like to perform all over the world, and just as we're preparing for any combination of teams to grapple with on the 10th of July, we're prepared to grapple with any team at any time. So, right. bring it on! Razzmatazz! <laughs> in this country, in any other country, on any other planet, in any right. other galaxy, Ooh, bring your bring spe- it, aliens! Now, wait a minute. I don't know about aliens. No, no I think... all right. Bring I'm, your, yeah, with species, come on over. New, new, yeah. new aliens. Little mm-hmm. giant cockroaches, ah, whatever giant. have you. <laughs> no, it'll, it'll work out. I got the bug spray. We'll be cool, man. <laughs> Still a work in progress, but... Yeah, no, it's... it's, I've I've got it. I'm a step ahead. You see, I'm trying to be tough and fierce, though. 
No, you're, no, and you're doing a great job. And I would think most giant cockroaches aren't friends, Ooh. so yeah. you have that on them. That's Ooh. true. I think they, they eat their own, don't they? It's probably. It's probably yeah. a very yeah, good test situation. Oh, no, 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 no. We got you. And, and right. going back to the coastline clash, you know, once again, to, to show the power of friendship, you guys were on the same page. You were a well-oiled machine, whereas Cold Cold World... They, there was dissension. Like you said, they could not get along. They didn't have the friendship. And it doesn't matter how big or strong you are, if you don't have the friendship, you will fall. They live in a cold, cold world. They, they do. That's that's point. All it takes to melt the cold is a little bit of warmth and sunshine. That's what we bring to the table. You really do. It's just a warm hug, and we hugged them out of existence. They're gone. I know. They are not coming back. I don't think they are. Monster Island is is their home from now on, and you know, global God bless warming. You. It's global warming for the cold, cold world. Yep. Because of the Friendship Express. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's that's a good thing to say. I don't oh. think we endorse global warming. Well, we think... like polar bears. Jeez, Giant. Those, those are strong not... words. Well, for yeah. the cold, cold world, I meant for them <laughs> oh, specifically. Just, just for yeah. them. Yeah. We stuck them in a microwave. Ah. Yeah. No. Oh, like gremlins when the gremlin explodes. Right. Oh no. He's oh, sorry. Oh no. He's 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 afraid of gremlins. Don't. Oh, afraid of yeah, gremlins. Yeah, and also, really. Scotty, I forgot oh, to tell you. Oh, exploding. He's afraid of gremlins. Oh, Mogwai are okay. Gremlins. Mogwai. Stop saying gremlins. <laughs> Mogwais are all right. Yeah. What did you say? Like it's Mogwai. What's that? It's the little. It's the little furry. Oh, ones g- gizmo. With the big ears like gizmo. It's gizmo. a Mogwai. Oh, he's very cute. Yeah, but then if yeah. you feed him after midnight, then he turns into a gremlin. Oh, oh, oh we sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, Stop saying oh, gremlins. We upset. have a couple at home. Gremlin. We're following the rules <laughs> and we're trying to make sure that nothing bad happens. Every night I can't sleep. Every night. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem. Knowing what's a few dollars down, how can you expect me to sleep? So Listen. when can you feed I'm them again? Okay. You can't feed them after midnight, but at what point? Sun up. Sun up. You feed them sun up to, to, but, to like sundown, but, and then you roll But Jervis, don't okay. you lock the door when you go to sleep? Oh, well, yes, of course, and I sit there with a the baseball bat. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think I could stand up to all those gremlins. I've you, seen them. You the shaking rocks the bed. You try to sleep in a rocking chair, don't you? Well, yes, sometimes. Yeah. But, but it, it, you know, sometimes I hear them scratching at the door just to tease me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard this. <laughs> I think it's in your head. <laughs> yes, every night. Every night these gremlins come. I don't want to talk about it anymore. All okay, right. okay, sorry. Well, you know, okay, can I say something that we, we lived in an era for so long looking up to a stone cold Steve Austin who famously said, don't trust anyone. Right. And I feel like times have changed. It's 2016. Yeah. It is not that time anymore. It is not time to be uh, so untrusting of everyone. It's JTS. Like- just trust someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one someone at yeah. least. At least, just just one person, and then I think we're it's a start. I trust you, that's Scotty. Friendship. Oh well, you know, I still want to see some background checks. Okay, on you. that's fair enough. The feeling is that's not mutual, but that's a start. <laughs> yeah. Right? No, hey, look, you can background check me. That's fine. Yeah, good. Uh, well, did you guys offended. background check one another before you started? I. Uh, don't. Well, I, I know I his history. He's 120. 100, 128. 128. Uh, so. Wow. I mean, he's. he's so that's a lot of life experience. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm quite like a vampire. I can't eat, but I also can't die. So um, <laughs> I just seem, seem to keep going on and on, and um, I haven't, I haven't aged in about a hundred years. Uh huh. So um. That's, that's gun bellies for you. Yeah. Yes, well, you they know. hold up incredibly well. Yes, indeed. Uh, there are many left, but they do hold up well. Uh, the yes, ones that are uh, there are cotton bellies everywhere you look, actually, if, if you look closely enough. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so cotton bellies, are, and just for a bit of history, cotton bellies are just like cupids. Um, we come from the same <laughs> place and we battle over serendipity. But, but you don't wear diapers. No, no, and we don't have Wait, wings. Pants. And we don't shoot people with arrows. We no. make people fall in love with warm compliments and friendship. And that's a great way to do it, too. Yes, yes. I mean, indeed. arrows could be a little bit uh, a little aggressive. Yes, yes. Those Cubans are cheeky. Oh, yes, they, they are. are. Cheeky bit, gets. A bit too cheeky. And, yeah, you know, well, good I've, on you for wearing the pants, yeah. I've got an inkling that um, that someone at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood is actually a Cuban. Johnny, you it's not me. No, it's certainly not oh. me. I don't. No, no, it's um, it's someone else, and I, I, I've got a lead on that, but I suppose I'll have to come back later and Is give it you Peter? an update. It's probably Peter. Well, you know what? 
we'd love to hear about it later on. Maybe we'll get to the bottom of it at one of the, the next TV tapings. Yes, indeed. I certainly will. I, I, you know, uh, Sherlock and Watson here will always um, get down to the to the case and bring our magnifying glasses out. That's right. All right. The underdog and the big dog. Woof, woof. There it is. Right. Well, where can everyone find you on social media? Well, you can find me at Gentleman Jervis That's right. on Instagram and Twitter. And find me on Facebook as well. Facebook.com slash Gentleman Jervis. Okay. Yeah, and you can find me on Twitter at True Hobo. I guess that's Instagram too. Facebook.com slash Hobo Trains mm-hmm. if you want to go to the Facebook. And where can people buy your shirts? And buy my shirts. Well, this one spectacularly is on nxteam.spreadshirt.com because every Wednesday I'm just maybe a door down doing the NXT after show here at After Buzz TV. Mm-hmm. And I'm on uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Hobo. Sounds good. And of course, at CWF Hollywood this Sunday, May 29th is the next TV taping, but advance notice Sunday, July 10th is our red carpet rumble. It's going to be amazing, Scotty. And to download the Fight TV app to yep. watch their story, Absolutely. watch the chronicling. We've mm-hmm. had a lot of Free. listeners who absolutely love watching it on Fight TV, so make sure you do that. The episode goes up today, actually, on the Fight TV, and we did oh. commentary on a tag team. Oh. I know, I, I, I was not able to sit in on that. I was yeah. very sad. Oh, well, I'm sorry but if we that's okay. bumped you down the if, line. If I'm going to give everyone, if I, I'll give my seat up to you guys any day. Thank you. That's that's very friendly of you. Well, I'm just trying to get some friends because Scott doesn't trust me yet. Uh, Go ahead. Put yourself over, Scotty. Uh, You can follow me on Twitter at Curtain Jerks and you can listen to my comedy wrestling podcast Curtain Jerks available on iTunes and SoundCloud and On Your Mark Show is back. YouTube.com slash On Your Mark Show. Last week was Billy Gunn and this week is Victoria Mm -hmm. and things go quite awry. Uh, Get me on that On Your Mark. I've been talking to to, to them there. Work it out for me. I will will, will do everything in my power. I don't, I don't think Mark E no, has... Uh, politely. Oh, I don't, I, all right. Please. There you go. I don't think Mark E has uh, the internet, but I think you could reach out to him. No, I want. could reach out to him. Yeah, sure. I sent him uh, letters. So. Good, I snuck yeah. into his backyard once. Ah, well. Oh, the Thompsons? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How was the show? Was it good? Was it was it... decent. Was okay. they could use a little work. A, well, little, <laughs> a little bit. Don't tell the him The ring that. is a little... Dangerous. It's mostly all just pillows. Marky don't Extreme know. needs the criticism from time to time. He's a little inflated in the ego. A little bit, a mm. little bit. He, he does think he's awesome. But uh, with that said, we are at Wrestling Buds on Twitter. We're Facebook.com slash Wrestling Buds. I am at Jay Quasto. Uh, this weekend, I'm at the Palm Beach Improv with my friend Rachel Feinstein. If you're anywhere near Florida, well, actually, Florida's a pretty damn big state. If you're anywhere near <laughs> West Palm Beach, come on out and see us. Also, uh, Wednesday, June 15th, I'm headlining in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, back home where I'm from at Arts quest so if you're anywhere near pennsylvania new jersey please come out there and i'm also going to be possibly in new york i don't quite know yet uh other than that a uh, big charity show this Thursday in Los Angeles. We're already at over 200 tickets sold. 100% of the proceeds go directly to kids battling illness and their families who need it. It's a thrill. We got Bill Burr on the show. We have Chris Hardwick on the show. And we're already over 200 tickets sold. It's a thrill to be able to help out so many kids. So if you're in L.A. or you just see it on social media, give it a share. Give it a retweet. We're trying to build something here, which is amazing. Speaking of building, we can't thank you guys enough for riding with us. This is episode 123, I think. And we keep on building. We keep having a Amazing guests like the United Tag Team Champions. That's how we won the belts. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. Friendship <laughs> Express. With that said, we love you guys and keep chasing those dreams, and we'll see you next week. Bye. I love you. Bye.